Hello and welcome to this WKTV sports presentation. I am Mike Mall along with Gary Vandevelde, Doug Hansen, and Phil Moore, and we are coming to you from Wyoming Lee High School for the 18th annual Stubby Overmeyer Card and Collector Show. It's an event Ty Amalander spearheads each year to create funds for the local high school athletic teams. And over my right shoulder, just as he has been to every one of them to this point, baseball's last 31 game winner. 1968 World Series champion and Cy Young Award winner, Denny McLean is here with us. I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk to Denny along with Ty and a few others. Hope you enjoy the show. We thank you for joining. Sit back and relax. We are joined now by Pete Bensoncourt, the JV coach. Now, I was a former player. Okay. So you're coaching the JVs. When were you here, Pete? I was here from 2013 to 2018. Okay. Yeah. And you played for Ty? Yeah, I played for Ty for every single year, all four years. I have the batting record here with the 518. 518 for the season. Yeah. Wow, that's that's good. Are you uh, relaying that? You're JV coach now. Is this your first year? This is my second year as JV coach. I started last year. We worked through a lot of newer kids, never had equipment before. So then we're just getting them tr the training they needed. Okay. And if I remember right, you were a catcher. Am I remembering or um, not? I caught sometimes, but I was primarily the pitcher here okay. and then shortstop and third baseman. Okay. All right. Yeah. What is an event? I know now you're seeing it on the other side of things. What does this event mean to you, not only as a player back then, but as a coach now? You see the benefits of it. It means a lot to me because even as a kid when I was here, just experiencing it and having just the ambiance of the area, like having a bunch of new people to come in just to support our team, and now from being on the other side of the table selling the stuff, it's like, we're really making the impact in the kids' lives to come back, to make a difference to them. So we can go do more things, get newer equipment, and just continue growing as a program. And that's excellent. What's your biggest challenge as a JV coach, though? It's got to be a lot of them. The biggest challenge is getting kids who've played before. Especially in this area, we don't have a lot of little leagues anymore because of COVID, but the kids are excited to play. It's just getting them the equipment they need to play. Well, Pete, we appreciate the time. We know you've got uh, pictures lined up here, silent things to get the autographs in. So thank you for the time, and I wish you nothing but all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. You too. We are joined now by the organizer and longtime Wyoming Lee resident, Ty Emmelander. Ty, it's always a pleasure to be here, sir. You too, Mike. We've done this a few times. Appreciate the uh, invite to have us come back out again for number 18. You guys have been troopers. You're here every year, and Gary says it's your favorite event to film, and I'm glad it is. It we is. We love having you. Absolutely. As I walk around out there, I'm seeing a whole lot of different faces this year and your vendors. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly why. I know, well, part of it is is we're all getting old. <laughs> and unfortunately, some have passed on. Some of them are having health issues. Yep. You know, so if you really think about just a lot of the people that you've been interviewed or people that used to come to this show are no longer here. Right. And that comes with age. My mom loved this show at one time. She's been gone a long time. Yep. Well, the guy used to do your job, Ray Peeler. Yeah, right, exactly. Ray was, his, his interviews are, we need a highlight film of his, oh. his interviews because they were so fun with Danny. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, those were, and those were big shoes to fill and I have never even come close. Oh, you do great. <laughs> you do great. And of course, Sharon. Sharon. Yes. You know, she's actually still, I think, the reason Denny comes here every year. Yes. She's the one that kept pushing him to come back and, um, God, we miss her. Yep, absolutely. 
And it's always good to see, uh, you know, we always try to talk to not only with you, but some of the vendors, but some of your players, either a current or a past one. And we talked a little while ago with one that's your JV coach now. Yeah, yep, it's, he's uh, coming. That, that's got to be fun from your point of view to see, having experienced him on the team, seen him in school, seen him develop as a man and, and go into that. Oh, yeah, I've, I've known Pete since he was probably in about third grade. You know, and he, he was a great baseball player here. He yep. actually holds a school record for um, batting average. He, he pointed that out to us. Did he? He made sure he knew that. <laughs> uh, but he, um, he, he's, he seemed like he's got good passion. He came on last year kind of late because we got a uh, guy backed out of being a JV coach. And Pete did a good, very good job. And um, hopefully he sticks around for a few years. And I, maybe someday I'll work under Pete. I wouldn't mind being an assistant for somebody that has good passion. Yep. And he said last year numbers you had to bind up by the end of the year you had to combine the two teams together what's it looking like for this next well, we had to a little bit we, it, it wasn't so much numbers it's we don't have kids that play baseball all their lives anymore yeah. we piney park literally two things that have really hurt our baseball program one was piney park little league um, some people noticed that the city got involved and the numbers instantly went in about half okay. and they've never recovered and so we don't have the kid that played all the way through Pioneer Park Little League no more coming to play baseball. And the other thing that hurt was COVID. COVID still, we're still, even this show is recovering from COVID some still. It's, yep. um, and we can use that excuse for so long, but we're, we're hoping to revamp the youth program a lot better this year. We, we were having a lot of trouble getting kids. We, I think we have a better plan this year. Yep. And can we fix it? Um, it's, we're gonna try. It's not gonna be because of lack of effort. Yep. And I'm, and I'm sure just like it didn't get into that spot overnight, it's not going to be an overnight fix. Right, without a doubt, without yep. a doubt. Yeah, you've So we're, we're going to try to focus on the youth a lot more this year. Yep. But we have a pretty, a fairly experienced team coming back this Good. year. And of course, some of the funds from this helps you make your trip down to Kentucky, if oh, I yes. remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, um, that's a a good portion of this helps kids get down there and go to go on our spring trip which is pretty valuable and it's a good time a lot of kids around here don't have opportunity to get away and do a lot sure. of stuff yep absolutely and how did you guys do last year last year we were i think we won about five six games okay. we were we if we could have held it together we had a few kids that um quit that hurt um they just didn't have the patience to see we were getting better and um a little bit, a little bit of injury issues last year yep. hurt us. It's always there's always things can come in eligibility issues. There's sure. a lot of different issues that can really affect your yep. season. Absolutely. Well, that is wonderful. I, from the point of uh, Wyoming Lee as a whole, you have been here. Have you been here your entire life? Um, no, I haven't coached here my entire life. I coached at Creston High School. But you have been part of the Lee District? Oh, yeah. I went to, shoot, my um, grandmother went to Lee. Okay. My mother went to Lee. Uh, my children went to Lee. I went to Lee. Yep. And my granddaughter actually briefly went here. Okay. And she was here today. She was a trooper helping out. It was amazing <laughs> how good she was at helping out this morning. And it's kind of come full circle because my daughter was a little bit older than that. I think about maybe two years older she used to come and okay do the same thing so it was yep. kind of a really neat experience to have yep. her this morning cool. all in the family nothing like yeah that yeah, was awesome <laughs> well Ty, i, I hope you're... i don't see the next generation of grand well i guess i do hope it but i, I won't be in very good shape <laughs> <laughs> they'll have to be doing all the work and you'll just kind of be mad to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well as always ty we greatly appreciate the invite to come back in here and and be part of this and bring it to the viewers and show everybody what it is and help promote it, but you guys do a wonderful job and just thank you for the time. Well, there's always people that do the work behind the scenes and um, Angie Beasley out there doing, stepped up doing concessions kind of late because we don't have a concession stand here right now because of reconstruction. Yep. And it's awesome, she's, she's just jumped in and she's already said, hey, I'll do it next year for you. And, nice. Um, you know, you got Pete here helping out and uh, Mike Donovan, Mike's a godsend. He helps me every year and yep. he does a ton of work um, behind the scenes and then of course Denny's here sure and Denny's um put a lot of time and effort into this yep and um I look forward to going to Cooperstown with Denny and helping him out this year it's a yep. kind of a trade-off and it's it's a fun time there so. you go and it's always I know you've kind of shifted dates around a little bit but is it kind of pretty much now always going to be we've, we've been the first Saturday in November for quite a while now yep. I can't remember exactly but it's been about seven years yep, yep. um we, we did, used to do it in February but we'd get the snow outs and uh, sometimes <laughs> snow can really throw it, 
throw a, a kink in your plans. Yep. Yep. I remember a few Saturdays coming over here and wondering if I was going to make it or not. It was. <laughs> yeah. yeah you, you live a lot closer than some of these people that are here. Exactly. All right, Ty. As always, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys, and make sure um, you know Doug. Um, Gary, get a free donut or some pizza and stuff out there because you guys have been awesome to this also. also. I see Phil around here too. Yep. He is wandering with us today. Uh, uh, he's been around a long time. All right. So. Thanks, Ty. I appreciate it. Thank you. Are joined now by Clay Powers. Very nice to meet you, sir. How's things going so far today? Great. Good turnout. Good venue. Good. Obviously, a big Griffins fan. Absolutely. Season yeah. Ticket holder? Um, not this year. Okay. About 15 years, though. Okay. Good for you. What uh, What do you have that's a special thing right here now that you really want somebody to know about, or you're hoping you don't go home with? Um, most of it, uh, <laughs> but right now, grab bags, got a good deal on those, okay. uh, $2 each, three for five. You can win a PSA graded Kobe Bryant rookie card. Nice. Very nice. And I see some of this. This is obviously the prized collection in the case here. Absolutely. Two graded Reggie Jackson rookie cards, um, some really nice graded Al Kaline younger cards, Alan Trammell rookie card. Uh, some nice, some nice cards. Very nice. How long have you been doing this? Is it just a hobby or is it? Um, hobby and business. Okay. About 45 years. Oh. Good memories. Done it with my dad. Nice. Um, trying to get my daughter involved in it. Um, a lot of kids out here. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's good. Yep. It's a good environment. Absolutely. I remember coming to some of the shows in years past and you had almost no youth. It was the adults and it is great to see, like you're saying, a lot of the youngsters here today. Yeah. Absolutely. So how many shows do you do? You go around West Michigan? Yeah, Petoskey, been to some in Indiana okay. um, as a buyer and a seller. Just enjoy it. Enjoy the environment. Like the people, like the crowd. Um, I like it. There you go. Come back down this way. Yeah, the grab packs that are down there and everything else. You got a full set of 89 tops here. Is there any card or anything you are looking for that you would like to get you're not able to? Yeah, my personal collection is Al Kaline. Um, I don't have his rookie card yet, um, but I have most of his others. So um, my dad collected Al Kaline. Okay. So I'm trying to finish that, that there set. There you go. That is a, a great memento from that point of view and continue on down to the next generation, yeah. like you say. Well, we appreciate the time. Very good to meet you, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you. No, no, don't go too far away. Why not? We're, we're, we're just going to surprise you a little bit here. This is one of the names I said in our opening, Mr. Phil Moore, been with WKTV for how many years? Ten, uh, ten years. Ten years? Yeah. I think it's been longer than ten years. <laughs> Since 1984. Okay, that, that's a little longer than ten, Phil. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> that was ten years before I yeah. actually quit. From okay, there. all right. So how are you doing? Well, I'm doing fine. Good. I know that uh, we used to see you at almost every single event. Yeah. You get out to many of them anymore or not too much? Not too much. Okay. I've been having a lot of uh, health problems lately. Yep. Yep. Well, it's good to see you here. I know Gary appreciates it, and it's always a good time. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy being with Gary all the time. Everybody enjoys being with Gary. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> He's taken me a lot of places I've never been. There you go. That That's helps. It. Quite the friend. Yes, he is. All right. Wonderful friend. Good to talk with you, Phil. Same here. It may seem simple, but it's complicated. You said you'd come back, and so I...
We are joined once again this year by Marv Van and Bosch from Zealand. Marv, it's always a pleasure, my friend. You betcha. Same here. How are you doing? Very good. Good. Very good. You betcha. How's business so far? Uh, today is a little slow so far, but okay. it'll it'll be good. There you go. I know it'll be good. So yep, yep. I got a, got a lot of good stuff here. So. What, what, is, what is a few of them here? Point some out to us, Gary. I'll get them on camera. Oh, I think we've had them right here. I uh, got an LK Line rookie card. Just got it this week. Oh, so it's hot on the press. It is hot on the press. And uh, normally, I think I've had four or five of them this year now. And every time I get one, it don't take more than a month to, to move it off the table again. I and bet. also got a beautiful 62 mantle there. And... I've got a couple other mantles on the table over there. I got a '59 that's just like mint. Nice. So, but uh, no, still doing doing real well with cards. So. Good. Yep. Out of all of your cards, and I think I've asked this before. We'll see if it has changed. What is a favorite? Probably still my LK line rookie card. Okay. I do have also a '55. Um, Rookie uh, Roberto Clemente card. And right there. So that is a Sharpie. Very nice. So, and I build sets for guys. So that one actually is a trimmed card. Okay. But it's authentic, it's real. And, and for the non-collectors, what is a trimmed card? Probably half the value. Okay. Um, guys that buy a card because they like it and they want to get it graded yep. so that they can make two times the money on me or three times the money on me, yep. they can send that in. and But they're not going to get mad at me because I've told them I, <laughs> I won't sell a card that's trimmed if I don't tell them. Yep. I won't do it. Yep. Won't do it. I bought it for a guy that is doing that set. Okay. And all of a sudden he had termites in his house. So that oh. took care of him buying that card for right now. Yeah. So either I keep it until then or somebody else grabs it up. But yep. it's it's worth the money. So, yep. Very so, nice. Nope. I know really last year you told me you were looking for that one mantle card. Is that in your possession? Yeah. Well, the 52 won't be. <laughs> 53, yes, I am looking for a 53 again. Okay. I am looking for one of them because I do have a gentleman that's building that set. Okay. But it's the same guy that's got that one coming. Yep. So I, it's going to be a while before I buy that one. There you go. And I know you do other shows in the area. Yes, I do. Uh, my church in Zealand, uh, Community Reform Church, that is every other month, um, second, second Saturday of the month. So that is February, April, June, August, October, and December. And then I will be doing a show in Holland the first uh, Saturday in February doing one in uh, Kalamazoo Wing Stadium. I believe it's the third Saturday in January. Is that Dale's? That is, used to be Dale's. Yep. Yes. Okay. And um, let's see what other, I think I'm Lansing. I do Lansing. Okay. And, and the good news, if we just talked about this before we went on yes. camera, about the one in Holland, you will have somebody with you. Yep. Yep, my brother, again, uh, he took a little c s the sabbatical, I guess you call it, yep. for, for health reasons and doing a lot better again and then went back down a little and uh, now to the point that I've got to help him entirely, which is great. It just puts us a little closer yet together, Very so cool. just nice, just nice to be able to have him yep. along. Good old brotherly love, nothing like you it, is there? That. Nope, that is really fun. All right. So, well, I see you have some people looking at some oh, cards, so we won't hold you up okay. anymore. But as always, we appreciate oh, the time. Thank you so very much. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, sir. All righty. Thanks. Here. Right there. Okay. All right. Now, here's the deal. Yes, you sir. You it three times. 
Okay. And whatever it lands on, you don't necessarily win. <laughs> no, no. You see, but yeah. you got it. You got to land on it twice. But here's the key: you want to land on it. You want to land on something the first and second spin. So now you got two chances to hit a, the, the, a, a winner. Okay. Makes All right. Now spin it hard. Oh, good. Good spin. Nothing. <laughs> Go I better get two in a row. Picture, eight by ten. All right, now you got to hit another picture. I did. Two in a row. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Detroit baseball logo. As they say, <laughs> Need another ten dollar bill. Let's go. Come on. Need another ten dollar bill. <laughs> we are joined now by Mike Donovan. Mike, it's always a pleasure to be hey. here. It's good to see you again. You too, sir. How are Thank things going today? Good, very well. Good. We're enjoying it. Another productive day with Denny and the crew yeah. and <clears throat> set up and everything. Right, we have a nice crowd. Uh, we got some very enthusiastic people that are joining us and they seem to come out in droves to meet Denny and yep. to kind of have fellowship with each other. And it's kind of a unique community, all the autograph and card collecting people that are out there. Yep. Yeah, it's always amazing to me. I mean, Denny, this is number 18. Denny's been here for all 18. So you figure the amount of signatures and things that he has signed to this point, And you still have the line of people coming through to get Denny's autographs. You do. And you know what? I was at a show last week, and they brought in a pretty nice signer. And I think they maybe sold 80 autographs. And we've done that easily here. But I think what it is is that Denny's iconic. And they love to just have the fellowship, the yeah. banter with them. He will converse with you. He'll tell you a story. And it's always a different one that you haven't heard before. So, yep. you know, I, I do think that he's, he's still a draw because he's who he is. Exactly. And I think that they know that this is 100% benefiting our students. We send our students to uh, camp uh, in Kentucky with the funding that we have from our show here yep. today. Yeah, I heard Denny talking about that at the start of it to try to get people to, right. you know, in and to buy and this and that. So that that's a very unique way of doing things. Right, it is. And, and you know, our kids couldn't do it any other way no. other than this. I mean, we're, as a district, 100% um, free and reduced lunch, so socioeconomically challenged. And our kids, uh, they deserve the same opportunities as anybody else. Absolutely. And this is a really nice experience for them. And they come back all the time and they talk about just how incredible the experience was yep. going to Kentucky and yep. with coach Ty and the assistant coaches like Pete Benacord and others, you know, it's a very meaningful event. So, yeah. So we appreciate it for anybody that's listening. We really do appreciate your support. Yeah. It's always fun because we, every year we try to get obviously like yourself and Ty and Denny, but we always search for a student or a past student. Mm -hmm. And every year when we talk to them as to what that means and that capability, every one of them to a T said, I wouldn't be able to do it without it. No. So, I mean, that, that right there says it's going for <clears throat> something good. Right. I mean, if you have a family and there's five students there, that's a lot of money that you're yeah. forking through um, the school and to fund different events that they're involved in. And it, it does, it, it matters. It, yeah. it really does. Absolutely. How's the school year going so far? It's good. It's, in, it's been interesting. I mean, we we are in the middle of our building project. It's coming. Uh, it's about the middle phases, okay. middle end phases. Um, I was hoping we would be done with the new um, uh, phase of the library and that we'd actually move the show in there. But that's a next year thing. Okay. Uh, we were, didn't quite make it, but it's uh, it's coming. Yeah. So yeah, it presents a little challenges here and there, but we're we're getting through there. Kids are amazing. They, yep. they um, are resilient. They, uh, they deserve this rebuild here. It's going to be really nice when it's done. Yep. So we're looking forward to it. 
Is there a rough time frame as to when they're thinking it will be completed or not yet? Well, the big phase that should be completed by November 30 okay. is what we're hoping. So that will be the library and that sort of thing. And then we have some phases in the classroom and in, in the front office. That'll be next spring, I would think. Okay. They should be done um, from the latest projections. But that's, that's hard to predict. You yep. know, you don't, oh, absolutely. You don't know with materials and that sort of yep. thing how that's going to work. Yep, without a doubt. Oh, we lost oh. Denny there. There, there went there, Denny okay. down. One down, All two right. to go. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to put you back up here. There you go. There you go. See, he's, he's still working. Even sitting here just talking to yeah. me, he's hard at work. There Ty will be impressed. There you go. <laughs> Denny, Denny should be. I, I hope he, he there knows go. I got his back, that's there for sure. There you go. We'll, we'll tell him you're still sticking up for him and yes. sticking him up, too. Sticking him up. <laughs> sticking up for him. That's what I do. Now, Den, right. Denny is, uh, I'm glad that I've had the opportunity to connect paths with Denny. Um, I was saying that he's a very, things that people don't know about Denny is that he's very deep and yep. he's very smart. He can talk to you on multiple levels of, of, on different topics, whether it's music or entertainment or education. His daughter is an accomplished teacher. Okay. All of his kids are, are very great people. Hmm. Um, and they are successful, they're, they're very smart, they all have advanced degrees. Wow. Um, and that's, that's really Denny's greatest accomplishment. You know, whether he realize, and I know he realizes it, but uh, you, know, you don't really think of him other than what he did on the, uh, the athletic side, but you think of him raising him and Sharon, obviously raising their kids, and that's his great accomplishment. Yeah, you know, like you say, I mean, we see it as a baseball player, 31 game winner, World Series champ, Cy Young Award winner. People don't look at it on the private side, the personal yeah. side. You don't realize that person, so that's, that's great to hear that. I saw a recording of him the other day when he was on the Ed Sullivan Show playing the organ. Yeah. And I forgot how talented he really was playing that. I've got his album at home, but yeah. it, to see it and <clears throat> watch it and listen to it on that, it was unreal. He, during his 31 game season, he actually had a job where he would play at a saloon in Detroit. And so he would play from like 10 to 1 in the morning. And he would get paid like. Okay, I got it. Then he needs okay. a relief pitcher. That never happened in real life, but he no, needs he, one today. When, when they actually, if the truth be told, if Denny actually had a reliever come in, there were about five or six games that he lost or get the no decision on because the reliever blew the game. <laughs> so he actually should have been like 35 and 35 and, and six or whatever yeah. it would have been that, yeah. that year. He, he was, he lost a lot of games in, because the bullpen lost him for him. <laughs> so that's how good he was. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, there are, there are some insight stories that we had not heard necessarily before, so we appreciate it. Yeah, I think you should ask him some of those. And Absolutely. Ask him, well, ask it might, about his might take a different tour this yeah. time when I'm talking with him. Yeah, that would be neat. I think that, that would be good to hear. You know, everybody needs to see this story. They hear about Denny McLean and some of the other things that have happened in his right. life, but you really need to hear the whole thing. He's yep. a very interesting man. Absolutely. He really is. Well, we appreciate that insight, well, and we appreciate the time as always, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Appreciate it. Take I'll care. see you. I woke up this morning, a little smile on my face. Well, we are joined by, <laughs> for the 18th time. Jeez, it's hard to believe. It is, isn't it? Denny McLean. Denny, always a pleasure. And we used to have such talented people here. And you're talking about <laughs> sitting in this chair, right? What a look. What a look I get. Man, I'll tell you. <laughs> Good old Ray Peeler. I know who you're talking about. Could have dropped the quarter and heard it all the way in Chicago. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? Fair to Midland. Had a little heart trouble about four uh -oh. or five months ago, but, uh, uh, you know, if my wife was still with me, she would have said, couldn't have been a heart, you don't have one. So, <laughs> you know, we'd have moved along pretty quick. <laughs> but doing good now. Okay, yeah, I'm okay. Good. I know last year when we talked, you were living in a hotel still. Finally, uh, I finally left the hotel there after you go. two years and three months. Did you ever get room service while you were there? Never, never. 
<laughs> but I got a lot of uh, Insta something. <laughs> What's it called? Instant delivery, something like that, like like Uber, something like Uber. There you go. So that works out pretty good. And as a matter of fact, quick story is, uh, I when I joined about a month ago, six weeks ago, I sent my first grocery list in, right? And uh, groceries arrived right on time, not a problem, perfect. And uh, the next week, I was out of town. And I come home that Tuesday after the Monday, and there was more groceries in my house. So I'm thinking, did I order these? I know once in a while memories are short, but did I order these? And I've got like four boxes of Twinkies and everything chocolate. And, and uh, so I'm going the next week again. With our trips, we normally don't get back till Monday night, Tuesday. So I can get back in Monday night again the following week. Damn, I got more groceries than I've ever seen in my life. I don't know where they're coming from. So uh, I, got a, I got a young lady who works for me who does all my tech work, you know, with the computers and the Zooms and mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, I, I, said, I said, listen, Harper, you got to find out what the hell's going on. I said, I, every time I come home from a trip, I got more food. And I said, I'm not eating what's here. So she said, let me find out about it. So then she gets the flu or some damn thing, so it takes another week or two. And she called me while we were on the road and said, by the way, you automatically, they have saved your last order because you checked the box that said weekly deliveries. <laughs> she says, you know what, you've only got about 18 boxes of Twinkies. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope Twinkies doesn't set off a sale with somebody that they think is eating that many. But they sure are good, aren't they? There you go, nothing like them. Nothing like a cold glass of milk and Twinkies. Yes, ma'am, yes, sir, yes, family. So obviously still on the road doing shows. Oh, God, yes. Um, since Sharon passed, I mean, it's, I have nothing else to do. Yep. And all my children are spread out across the world. I got my son in Australia with two granddaughters. I've got uh, uh, a daughter in Tampa, Florida. I've got uh, granddaughters, uh, three granddaughters in Texas and a grandson. And I've got a uh, granddaughter up in Boston, and I've got, an, and I'm missing somebody too. Oh, 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 oh my, my son Denny's daughters. And uh, <laughs> then I've got my other granddaughter, who now has a master's degree in engineering, 26 years old. Hmm. And uh, she is in uh, LA working for um, Amazon. Wow. And uh, so in my family now, my grandson, not my grandson, but my son owns a company in Australia, which is an engineering company. Okay. So the two girls now, I've got two girls who are now engineers. And the last one, Chrissy, has now got a master's degree wow. in uh, engineering. So, and I asked her when I saw her a couple of weeks ago, I said, what are you gonna do, are you gonna get a doctorate? What, what are you gonna do? She says, I've had enough school. <laughs> I said, you don't have to tell me. I, hell, I said, I'm tired of paying for it. I said, let's, let's, let's move ahead and make some dough. I said, by the way, uh, when you do make a lot of money, don't forget my address. <laughs> so that'll never work either, will it? Probably not. You never know. Might I be got, a surprise. Listen, I got, I've been blessed. Uh, God did me a favor with all these grandkids and because I don't know if I would have gotten through the loss of Sharon. I have sure. no idea. And uh, I mean, I lost a daughter at, at a very early age, 24. And she, I mean, uh, she was 24. And um, she had been married three days and oh, wow. got hit by a drunken truck driver. Mm. Uh, and that was just awful. Just, it never went away. It still doesn't go away. But uh, this thing with Sharon after 53 years of marriage, God, I didn't realize. I, 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 I didn't know how to operate the laundry. Yep. Couldn't hit the washer, the dryer. Sure. I thought, in fact, the first time I did the, the laundry in the house, uh, I put the stuff that needed to be cleaned in the dryer. You know, go figure. Yep. You know, couldn't find socks. Or, well, I still can't find socks, but <laughs> can't find shoes, can't find underwear. And so I had to have somebody come in and try to straighten it out. And these two women came in, straightened it out. The next week, they said, what the hell happened? I said, what do you mean? She said, looks like somebody come in here. It looks like the cops come in and raided the place. <laughs> so I'm a slob. I'm a good slob, though. I really am. There you go. I really am. The gift of family, though. Nothing like it, Oh, is there? man, I'll tell you. I go, I talk to my grandkids, I think, almost 
almost every week I talked to every one of them, and especially my daughter Michelle, who lives in, Tam in the Tampa Bay area. Um, I, uh, and she's the one that gave me three grandchildren. And uh, just, uh, you know, you talk blessings in your life, there's nothing like a grandchild. Yep. It, they hit you and they stay with you and they stick to you and, <laughs> you know, and if you can build a relationship with them, I'm telling you folks, it's the best thing you can do for yourself. Absolutely. I've seen a lot of grandfathers and grandparents in here today uh, together, grandparents and the, and, the, and the children. Yes. I mean, I can't get over how many I've seen. And you know, this thing is exponentially growing to the younger crowd now. Uh, we don't have uh, all you old people anymore. You know, I mean, I don't consider myself an old person yet. Of course, I'm gonna be 80. 80? Looking good for it though. <sighs> Everything hurts, everything. Listen, and I'm not, and, and listen, I'm not, I'm not going to say it. Never mind. I'll get in so much trouble if I say what I'm going to say. He can always beep it out. Oh, man. Get me some Vicodin. <laughs> what do you want me to say? I hurt everywhere. I've got, uh, what do they call it, the, the, the rheumatism. I've got uh, arthritis. Or what, what the hell is that? I forget. It's the most serious of, of the arthritis. Okay. And I'm telling you. Oh, and I got, you know, when I f finished my career, of course, I severed my rotator cuff. And then I apparently started favoring, because I used to play a lot of golf. I was getting ready to go on a senior tour at one time. And, um, until I got, that. and then I got hurt. No, I hurt. I, got, I get hit by almost 20 railroad ties. I remember that. That was a bad day, boy. Um, and so that destroyed my chance because I'm still not walking well. Yep. And this is four and a half, five years later. But um, it, that's what I'm saying. Everything between pitching, the, sever you know, the, sever the severity of the injury with the shoulder, and the, and the other shoulder somehow went bad too. Yep. So between all of that and everything else, the older you get, the older you get, the older you get, you got you. You have a new problem every week or yep, every month. And, I'm sure. And um, you know, I've always said this: God did it the wrong way. He should have started with all of us old fogies and worked back backwards the other way. <laughs> Wouldn't have been better. Wouldn't have been nice. I you hear know? you. It would have been much easier and getting much younger easier. instead of the much age. Much easier. As, yeah. as my wife says, golden years. Yeah, right. Golden years. <laughs> I want to find one golden years. If you win the lottery, it's not golden. You know, they take half of that. Exactly. So, now well, I saw a picture earlier this year. You guys had a little reunion of the '68 Tigers. We there did. Were five There's or six the, of you there. There were six of us there. Um, Wayne Comer just died. He was yeah. actually number seven, but he but he wasn't at the show. Uh, so it was me, Lola, John Hiller. John Warden, uh, Mickey Stanley, and Willie. And Willie, yep. I forgot about Willie. Yep. So th those are the six of us that showed up there that day. And yep. uh, had a, Tigers did a nice job with it. I mean, and I'm, I'm the least complimentary to the Tigers with the ball clubs they've been putting on the field. Yeah. But they really did a nice job for us, Good. especially, they, you know, it's just nice to be recognized uh, with all of the hoop de la going on in Detroit right now. Now we got the Lions. All of a, all of a sudden, the Lions are beating teams. My yep. God Almighty! Yep. I mean, whoever thought we'd live that long? <laughs> I mean, just think about it. I mean, after 60 years, they're winning a ball game. That's important. Exactly. <sighs> Mr. Hansen here had his Lions jacket on when he came walking in, so he was beaming. You know. I wouldn't go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, listen. And the Red Wings are starting to play better early in the season this year. Well, whatever you do, don't get cocky on the Red Wings yet. <laughs> I mean, let us not forget last year and the year before yeah, that. That's true. We won't go to the Pistons. We'll leave them alone. But are the they Tigers? still playing? What's that? Pistons still playing? They, I'm not sure if they are or not. But I they... know they won a game the other day. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> they won one game. There you go. Somebody said, well, they're getting closer. To what? The end of the season. <laughs> I said every game they lose, they're closer to the end. Tigers seem to show some improvement this year. They did. She must have been watching a different team than we did. I, uh, I went to about 20 ball games this year. Okay. The only reason is we get in free. Um, 
The, um, I just don't see where they've improved. The pitching is, it's less than mediocre. Yep. Uh, they may have one guy, the, the, the one kid who I think wants to be traded, the left-hander. I think he wants out of here bad. And I don't, listen, I don't blame him for one reason. Everybody wants to pitch with a winner. But I don't want him to do, I mean, Stafford was here for 10 or 11 years with the Lions. And then after 10 or 11 years and taking $300 million from the organization, he wants to win a pennant? Yeah. Are you kidding? I mean, I, I could not believe that he wanted to leave Detroit. This is, the, this is where he, they, we brought him. This is we gave him $300 million. And then he takes his money and goes to L.A. I thought it was Bush, really, really Bush. Yep. And, uh, and I said so a number of times. But, uh, you know, I hope he's having a good time out there. Yes, he wins the Super Bowl. It, and with all due respect, winning is winning and winning is winning, especially in the professional ranks. But, you know, they won the game on a break with, with seconds to go. So, um, and, and I'm not saying he didn't have a lot to do with it. Right. But he's always been a fourth quarter quarterback when they're way behind. Yep. He's never been an out front guy as a quarterback. And uh, he's got a nice family, nice wife, nice everything else. But I thought it was a real Bush thing to run to L.A. because I want to win a Super Bowl, you know. <laughs> so to hell with him. I, I take that back. The hell with him. No okay. kidding. World Series just wrapped up. Did you watch it? I watched it uh, for one or two games, a little, a little bit, because I was with the Texas Rangers at one time yep. for a short time, about an hour. And um, <laughs> That's a short time. <laughs> you weren't kidding, because we moved from Washington to Texas as an organization. And then uh, when, in spring training, I was there about three or four weeks, and, and uh, Williams and I got into a real, real bad argument and you're not going to win an argument with the manager <laughs> and uh, when I got about halfway through the argument I said you know I think I'm about to get traded and boy <laughs> the next hour I was out of there I was gone so uh, no it was um, they look pretty good I mean let me tell you something if there was one club you would not pick to win it I think it was them with all the clubs that were in it at one time right uh, I was surprised because the, they're pitching history was so bad yep. and man they had some great pitching they especially really in this last series it yep. was unbelievable yep. and that see that's what we got to have we got to find those kids we don't have the personnel that can go out and see why you want to draft a guy yep. i mean we just don't have that in the organization they should have brought back dombrowski let him put it together again the reason they don't want him there because he spends money you can't win without money. You have to have a ton of money to win in the major leagues, whether it's football, basketball, hockey, or bas no matter what. You got to have the money, the resources. Sure. And, if, and I always told Chris Illich this, if you can't put the money up, sell the team. Right. Just give the fans a shot. You know, and so we'll see what happens next year. But folks, don't hold your breath. You'll be holding it next year at this time, <laughs> listening to this show. <laughs> I, I hear they're looking for a couple of announcers. Maybe you could get a job there. We talked to uh, Mike when he was alive. Me and Eli uh, talked to uh, Mike at one time about it. And uh, Mike says, if I put you two guys on the air, he says, you will destroy the franchise. <laughs> and, and I didn't know, I had still to this day, I don't know what he meant by it, because we were always, we always pulled for him. I mean, right. geez, that's, that's my... Uh, uh, that's where I started, right, yeah. more or less. And, yeah. uh, and, and I like being around the ballpark. I mean, I don't think there's anything more majestic than walking into a major league ballpark and seeing that green grass, yeah. especially from an elevation. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that uh, very few people see in sure. the grand scheme of things. Uh, but it's a great place to be, a great place to watch a game, great place to watch anything. They have concerts and everything in there now. But uh, it's... Uh, and the Tigers aren't going anywhere, that's for sure. Yep. But they got to come up with some pitching. The pitching is just uh, deplorable. If, the, if they don't, I, uh, and I think I picked them right on the number this past year. What their, what, I forget what the number was, but the one loss record, I think I picked them right on the number. I said they will not be 500. Yep. 
and then uh, you know they show little sparks of wanting to get to the 500. Those weren't sparks. It was wet bottles of Pepsi. You know, <laughs> I, I I don't get it. How can you be satisfied with this many years right. of bad baseball? No, absolutely. It's satisfaction. Yep. I mean, you would you go to J.C. Penney's or would you go to Kmart, whatever stores were, if they're still alive? Um, would you go to anything if if they don't do the right thing? Right. Hell no, you wouldn't do no. the. You know, they overcharge you. Would you go back? No. Nope. I mean, and, and we keep going back to right. Tiger Stadium, you know, or the, or the new stadium. Yep. And uh, it just doesn't make sense. No. Nope. But, you know, they're going to draw less and less unless they do something. Exactly. And you could see that this last yeah. year. Yeah. In years past, that had stayed pretty steady. But this year, it really took a drop, even with Miggy's last year and everything. Well, thank God he's gone. I mean, enough attention has been called to Miggy to float a battleship. Uh, and I think that took away from the ball club, too. Yep. I think it took away from them playing. I think the players got a little tired of it. We heard little rumors once in a while, some arguments in the clubhouse with Mickey. Uh, Mickey probably wasn't the best clubhouse guy in the world when it came to the players. But, um, you know, he had a great career. Yep. Had a great career. They hung on to him too long. Uh, they could have got rid of him six, seven years ago. But they got, I think what happened, they got greedy. They thought he was going to still hit 35, 40 home runs. And of course, by that last year, seven years ago, you could tell it just wasn't going to happen anymore. Right. Could not get around in the fastball at all. And once you can't get around on that, I got news for you. They'll all throw the same pitch to you because mm -hmm. they're not afraid of throwing the ball. Yep, absolutely. Forgot what I was going to tell you. Yep. Now, Mike Donovan, I know you guys have had quite a few conversations lately. We were talking with him earlier, and he mentioned a story about a book with Ted Williams. Oh, 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 yeah. We, uh, he kind of alluded to, he told me to ask you about. Yeah, uh, Ted, uh, of course, was my manager in Washington, and he really did suck. He was terrible. <laughs> How do you really feel, Danny? Well, you know, he's... <laughs> Wasn't a nice person either, by the way. <laughs> but uh, what happened was um, he come out sometime, I think it was Ju late July, early August, sometime after the All-Star game, and uh, he had a new book come out on hitting. And what else would Ted be writing about? Although, he, you know, he was, a, he was a true American hero. He flew in two wars, yep. uh, just did some miraculous things in the air for the military. And so I had great respect for him. I mean, I fly, I've got 12,000 hours in command of my own airplane. So I, I really respected him for that. He gave him a number of rides in my airplane. So we had, we had family to visit once in a while. So um, he comes out to the dugout, calls everybody in from batting practice, and says, all right, everybody listen up now. I've got a book that, by the way, I've autographed. I mean, he took it on his own to autograph every book. And, uh, and it's now in your lockers. And what I want everybody to do, it was a Tuesday. He said, what I want everybody to do is read the book and we'll have a Q&A Friday. Well, this did not sound like a good idea to me. <laughs> and uh, you're gonna tell me what a hitter is? I mean, come on, I've been getting them out for eight years. So uh, Dick Billings, who was a Michigan guy, was uh, Ted decided that he was gonna put certain pitchers with certain catchers. And my guy was going to be Dick Billings, which was the worst idea I've ever had, in, they, he ever had in his life. Because we were Pinochle partners also, and he cheated. My partner cheated. I loved it. He cheated all the time. So it didn't make any difference. We still were losing $50 a day. So uh, 50 in those days were a lot of money. I was going to say. So uh, Billings is sitting there and just listening to Ted promote his book. And blah, 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 blah. And I uh, said, Look, so everybody understands, Friday, same time, 4.30, we're going to take a QA and a and get this over with, because i got to teach you guys how to, what are the basic structure of hitting is. So here come Friday, and he calls his meeting at 4.30 in the afternoon, and it's, you know, it's in Washington, D.C. It's 150 in the shade, right? And we're out on the field at uh, 3.30, 4.30 sure. in the afternoon. And uh, we're all sweating like sows, for God's sakes. And um, Ted says, all right, we're ready. Uh, who wants to talk about the book first? Not an arm goes up. <laughs> and, I'm, and, I'm, and Billings is over here on my right side, and Ted's over here. And uh, it's like Billings is trying to just stay behind me, you know? 
because uh, I told him before the meeting, I said, shut up. <laughs> Don't say a word. You will kill us if you let this guy light us up. I said, I'll tell you one thing. You won't play for a long, long, long time. So uh, next thing, Ted's looking for questions. Nobody's raising their arm. And lo and behold, he says, nobody's got a question? How about you, Billings? I said, oh, God, <laughs> Lord, Jesus, help me. And, it, and he called on Billings. He said, yeah, yeah, I got a question. He says, you know, Ted, I do have a question. I said, I said Dick, shut up. Just please <laughs> shut up. He says, I'm going to ask my question. You mind? I said, I don't know you. I said, you just do what you need to do. So he said, Ted, if I buy a book over the weekend on surgery and I come back Tuesday, am I a surgeon? <laughs> You know how long it was before Dick got back in line up? At least a month, six weeks. No kidding. Oh, he punished the hell out of him. <laughs> and, every, and he told Billings sometime in the clubhouse that night, if I see you walk by me, I'm going to send you to the bullpen. <laughs> and Billings says to him, he says, well, what if the game's over with? He says, go anyway. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't send me the text oh, with you. Oh, God <laughs> almighty Lord. Oh, what a year that was. <laughs> Accused me. I was on the DL for about three weeks there one in uh, '71, and uh, he accused me of playing softball while I was on the DL. Hell, I couldn't walk, you know. And, and I had to produce pictures eventually, you know. I just <laughs> talk about nuts. It was the nuttiest clubhouse in the world. It was uh, <laughs> instead of going into the clubhouse and getting dressed, everybody come in and play pinochle. We had the plainest pinochle crew you've ever seen in your life. And they all cheated except me. Except you. I counted cards. <laughs> <laughs> That's not cheating. Not really. <laughs> well, we lost a couple more of your old ex-teammates this year. Jimmy Price, like yeah. you said, Wayne Colmer. It's getting to be fewer and fewer of you guys left from that team. Well, my, I have a dream. You do? Yeah. Okay, what is your dream? Me and Martin both had a dream. And one of my dreams is I'm the last guy standing. There you go. You know, it's, uh, and I say that tongue in cheek facetiously, but um, I, I just, uh, I've gotten used to living, <laughs> you know. Uh, and, I, and I go like this when I wake up in the morning. I was where one I was. Eye, one eye open, <laughs> just to make sure no dirt falling in, you know. <laughs> But it's, uh, it's been a, you know, I've had a great life. Just, yep. I've had a great life and had the greatest of all wives. And uh, with all due respect to every lady in the audience, uh, I've just been lucky, really yep. lucky. And the greatest kids. Yep. I mean, my kids are, uh, some of them are saintly. And to think they're my children, my <laughs> God almighty. Well, that's where they got all their smarts from, isn't it? I would think they got some of them. Sharon would not allow that to be said <laughs> but uh you know I, they did pretty good between the two of us because whatever i said she corrected <laughs> and oh. i learned out a long time ago you know they they the, the honey pot right mm -hmm. when the honey pot wants you to do something you do it mm -hmm. it's a great way to live 53 <laughs> years in a marriage right how exactly. long have you been married uh we just went 37. oh you're just starting for christ's sake <laughs> I mean, wait, wait another 10. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's, uh, and, and, but it, you know, listen, I, I just think uh, a good marriage is, is being able to laugh when it's almost impossible. There you go. And uh, to enjoy each other, good, bad, and different. You're in it together. Yep. You know, so you get a little mad once in a while. You throw knives and shoot people, but, but I'm only kidding. <laughs> so... Uh, we, uh, I know, we, we, we had a gun once. Sharon and I had never had a gun. We were only like, we just got to Detroit, as a matter of fact, because we read all the papers all the time. You know, everybody got to, everybody's shooting this guy, nope. shooting that guy. And so we, uh, I got uh, to meet a couple of cops down by the ballpark, and the guy said, why don't you come down to the shooting range and see how you feel about a gun? I said, listen, I grew up in Chicago. I know what a gun is. I grew up in the south side of Chicago where you hear guns go off all night. And the guy said, no, it's not like that here. So we're there about a week living in the Lindell AC, no, Lindell something club down, downtown. 
And uh, that first night, all we heard was, you know, sounded like uh, Vietnam, for God's sakes. So uh, we uh, went to the gun, sh gun uh, range with the, with the cops, and uh, we shot there that night. And by the time we left, couldn't hear. I mean, these things are so loud. Yep. So we put the gun away, threw the bullets away, put the gun away, and that was it. 25 years later, we get a phone call from an attorney of mine on the east side of Detroit. In fact, he was a judge then, right? Michael David Schwartz. And Schwartz says, listen, I got your gun here. I said, I don't have a gun. He says, yes, you do. He said, it's been used in four or five bank robberies. Oh, no kidding. I said, it's not me. It can't be my gun. <laughs> I said, it's impossible. He says, four or five different people had that gun either passed or sold to them over 20 years. Oh, my word. Isn't it unbelievable how it traveled? Yes. It traveled in and out of the state, too, by the way. Wow. I mean, it just was a shocking story to me. Absolutely. And uh, so we never bought a gun. I had a rifle once, and I said, I, don't, I couldn't even figure out where to, that's okay. Um, I had a rifle once, couldn't figure out where to put the bullets. Sharon says, oh, you got a place you can put them. <laughs> no. Yeah, when you look back at 1968, you guys win the series, all of everything is going on in the city of Detroit and everything else. It had to be an unbelievable feeling. I mean, with the riots and all of that turmoil and everything else. And I mean, it had to almost feel like a saving grace, if well, you will. Well, the, the, the riots were the saddest thing I'd ever seen in my life. And, I grew, and again, I grew up in Chicago. Um, I never thought there was anything more violent than Chicago could be, but this was, this was pure insanity. I mean, do you realize, and I don't know how many of you know this, <coughs> Mickey Lolich was in the National Guard. So he gets called up, right? And he has to go put his fatigues on or whatever the hell they dress in. And they, and they give him a corner to stand on, him and another guy. Well, guess what? They didn't give him bullets. No bullets for the gun. He didn't realize it until the second or third day. Oh, my word. Now, what's he going to do? <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> yeah. Fall over. Bang, bang, fall over. <laughs> I mean, geez, I just couldn't believe it when, when the story was told. But that's the way it was back then, you yeah. know. Plus, the city was in pretty good shape then. Uh, you know, all the big stores were still there, and people still went downtown on the streetcars and things like that. And see, I think that's where the biggest mistake was made. Once they sold the streetcars, nobody could get downtown again. Oh, okay. You know, that's what I think happened. And it's just too bad, because I, I think if they would do it over again, They'd forgive, they would forget the $60 million the Japanese gave them and just stay with what we had. Because yep. wouldn't it be nice to have that around here today? Oh, yeah. Wouldn't that be great? Absolutely. Well, speaking of Mickey Lolich and, and uh, Gary, our cameraman there, showed you a picture just before we got going. You and Mickey Lolich on a Kawasaki motorcycle. Well, um, there's a reason for it. I wish I knew why, but uh, <laughs> no, we, uh, we used to, um, he, he, he always had a motorcycle of some okay. kind. I, I, I didn't believe in getting, I, I rode one motorcycle one time with my brothers, and my brother was trying to teach me how to drive it, you know, with all the things up on the handlebars sure. and everything. And he said, just take it around the block. I said, Timmy, take it around what block? I said, if I get on this thing, I, some bad, you know, on the pitch, I just won, I just won 20 okay. at 66. So he said, no, Dan, go ahead. You, you'll, you'll really enjoy it. You'll love the wind in your face and da, 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 da. I said, I'm not thinking wind in my face. That means bugs, doesn't it? <laughs> so uh, I come back, come around the corner, probably going too fast. I can't figure out where the brake oh, is. No. And um, I turned it into the driveway, missed the driveway, hit the ditch, which is like eight feet down. I'll tell you one thing, the motorcycle will stop hitting a ditch eight feet deep. <laughs> the person on it doesn't, though. And I'm telling you, and I say this with all candor, this is the truth, I swore I to store, tore my scrotum off. I swear, that's how bad it hurt. I'm telling you. I didn't walk for two days, for Christ's oh, sake. Oh, man. Oh, that was a bad time. I bet so. 
Well, Denny, it is always a pleasure. You know, you, you commented on family and everything else and how blessed you are. I think Wyoming Lee is blessed to have you come over year in I and year I had nothing out. but a great time here, always. Just uh, Ty, his family, the kids, uh, and now one of his sons is going to be a pastor. Okay. Um, isn't it unbelievable? Because I remember this kid when he was a younger kid. He yep. wasn't wasn't going to be a pastor when I knew him as a kid. <laughs> he was getting to be a pastor, all right, but in a number of ways. But, uh, you know, and, and Ty would just say, he'll come around, he'll come around, he'll come around, and he's finally got there. And, and just all of, and, and the, and our, I call them our granddaughter, Bella. I mean, just, uh, she's the smartest eight-year-old in the history of the world. She just... <laughs> And she's not afraid of anything or anybody. She says, I need, she come up to me a little while ago and said, I need a ball. I said, excuse me? <laughs> she said, I need a ball. I, she said, and I got it sold. I said, it's my ball. Well, I'll split it with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll split it with you. And then she brings us donuts this morning. <laughs> and she says, after we both pick, my guy and I pick out a donut to eat that when we first got here about 8 o'clock. And, uh, and she said, there'll be a dollar, please. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about a dollar? She said, oh, I'm only kidding for you. But he's got to pay, too. <laughs> oh, she's worth a million dollars. She's yeah, just uh, so precious. Yep. I mean, just, uh, you know, everybody should <laughs> stay away from her. <laughs> She's going to be a killer. <laughs> she is really something. Really, uh, uh, just, she is so involved in everything. I mean, she was, she could have set up this whole building by herself this yep. morning. That's she was moving she was everything around. 6.30 with him. She was here. She, she asked him last night, could she go at 6.30 with him? And I'm thinking, this is an eight-year-old that wants to get up at five o'clock in the morning? But that's her. She runs like a a blast out of hell for there God's go. sakes and she never stops in fact where is she now she's playing soccer <laughs> and she's coming back <laughs> ah to have that much energy oh my god <laughs> lord I don't know if I ever had that much she's got a full tank and a full tank and a half boy there you go unbelievable yep well like I say Denny it's always a pleasure it's good to see always you always nice again. to see you guys we greatly appreciate the time you take out to come and visit us I'm sure people are lining up out there once it's again to fun. get more Denny McLean autographs and well, never fails they just keep rolling in for you man well they roll in for us here that's the reason why and, and you know plus we reduce the prices and everything so everybody's got a shot to come in and yep. and not necessarily the autograph but the school gets the money. Yeah. We, we take care of a lot of resources with this money. The travel money for the baseball team and, and a number of other things that we take care of. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is well-intentioned and well done. And, yeah. and um, it's just wonderful to see. Listen, at, at 8.30 this morning, we had a full house. Yes. 8.30 this morning, we, you could not walk through the aisles. That says something about Ty, his people, his children, and the way the school handles things. It yep. says a lot to me. Yep. And because uh, you, you wouldn't see it. If people were upset with the school and the children and what have you, and the teachers, would they come out at 8.30 right. in the morning? Nope. Uh-uh, not, not a chance. <coughs> and you got the roulette wheel this year. We got the roulette wheel. And um, from now on, we're going to have that roulette wheel. I've had one winner today. It wasn't me. No, it wasn't you. <laughs> It'll never be you unless you go over there and spend ten dollars. I did. You did? Yes. You lost? Of course. It's a good thing. You you wouldn't believe me when I told you it was on it for the second time. Because had I, I hadn't spun it. Well <laughs> had I had I known about it, I wouldn't have hit the button. I'm only ah, kidding. I'm only right, I'm Gary. only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Gary asked me, he said, Was he manipulating that no, back there? No, no, no. But I and I got a bigger wheel coming next year. <laughs> I got me a real wheel coming next year. We just ordered it yesterday. All right. Making the Hall of Fame trip, did you? Oh, yeah. We do it every year. Absolutely. Go. We have a great blast up there with me, and, me and Ty. And uh, we, uh, you know, we, Ty and I have been doing it forever. Yep. You know, I mean, it's, uh, I don't know how he does it. He works all day, all night long, and then he drives all night to get there. <laughs> Excuse me. I have no idea how he does it. I drive two blocks and I'm doing this. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Yep. 
I mean, the, the thing I hear the most, you know, I turn my radio on, the thing I hear the most every time I get in the car is, you know what that is, don't you? <laughs> That's the side of the highway you're not supposed to be on. <laughs> And that's, right. that's not as bad as my driver, who's supposed to be the driver. His go, brr, 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 brr. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy. Just crazy. <laughs> well, Denny, thank you, sir. It's my pleasure. Always thank my you. Good pleasure. Good to see you guys. Sir. Greatly appreciate it. You got a good crew here. Thank you. You take care it's and all the best. They're a little older. You need a younger crew. Yeah? Got to get some youth in here, do I? A lot of youth. <laughs> I can't, I can't walk across the room and here you are across this parking lot, for God's sakes. <laughs> My Lord. Take Everybody care. out there, stay safe. Take care, Denny. Safe travels back home, my friend. And tell them to get their shots. Yeah, absolutely. There you Please. go. There's no downside to the damn shots. Get the shots. <laughs> God, it makes me upset when I hear people not going to get a shot. Yep. And I, and I look at it. Where's the downside? When you come into the world, you get the flu shot. You get every other shot you can think of. And, and the first time you go across the, the oceans, you're getting more shots. The, and more countries that you go to, the more shots you're going to get. Yep. And they think nothing of those. But a lousy, an eighth of a second injection to save your life, nobody, they don't, eh, makes no sense. <laughs> makes no sense. It was up to me. You'd get a COVID shot as soon as you were born. <laughs> <laughs> With that, we'll say thank you, Denny McLean. See you guys. All right. This okay, is now sprint it hard. What is it? Nothing. A blue. Wait, there's another one. Same place. <laughs> so I'll give you one more because that was a bad spin. Now this time spin it, okay? Spin it. What's what's Detroit logo? It's a baseball. Picture eight by ten. All right, now here's now you can match the picture. Okay. Match the picture, you got it. I don't think I did it hard enough. Oh, I won off. You know what they call that, don't you? <laughs> well, that is going to wrap up our program here today from Wyoming Lee High School, the 18th annual Stubby Overmeyer Card and Collector Show. We thank you for joining us once again. And as always, we thank Ty Amelander and Wyoming Lee High School for inviting us over. And as always, we thank Denny McLean. He is still signing, just like what when he played at baseball. He doesn't need a reliever. He is finishing it out strong. Always a pleasure to talk to him, along with the vendors and everybody else that we were able to get in touch with today. And as always, we look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, all the bust. And from my old partner here, Paul Cableman, his saying is, If you can't, be, can't play sports, be a good one. Oh, the boss? I'm not the boss. No, no. There's like way lower things down the rung, and I'm, I'm not the boss. Ty is the boss. <clears throat> yep. Oh, he is falling a little bit. And here. hey, I'm blessed to work with Ty, so I'll say that. And she says, okay, will you do what I ask you to do? I said, yeah. I said, will you do what I want you to do? <laughs> and she says to me, and she says, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to take that bet. I said, today's Thursday. I said, we get married on Saturday. He said, really? I said, really? I'm still single. <laughs> Didn't work at all. But I had one bite. I had one bite recently. It scared the <laughs> out of me. There was a nibble. <laughs> she scared the Yeah, I can't out. imagine why you're single. Get the police. It's an MIA. <laughs> Where the hell have you been? Busy. Oh, you're not shit. that busy. You can't Get come and see us one day a month. <laughs> one day a year. You need help, Bob? Yeah. I got it, I got it. I got it. Yep. You can see YouTube and I'm losing my pants. Wait a minute. Well, I don't want to see that. Please, <laughs>
Hey Ben, terrific. I could walk. <laughs>